So the guy who built ChatGPT, the actual brain behind ChatGPT, just told the world that throwing money at AI is no longer working. Think about that for a second. What happens when a trillion dollar industry built on one simple idea, just make it bigger, and they've now run out of road? What do billion dollar AI investments actually get when you have the original blueprint stops developing? And here's the question that should keep every tech leader up at night. If the godfather of modern AI says, we need a completely new approach, why is nobody in corporate America paying attention? I'm gonna break down what this shift means for business developers and the entire tech industry today. Let's dive in. So Ilya Suskiver, Suskiver, I, I'm, I'm going to get his name right at some point. Sorry, Ilya. If I, it'd be great if Ilya watched this. But the co-founder of OpenAI, who literally architected the scaling approach behind GPT-3 and 4, and just sat down with an interview and essentially said, party's over. The just add more GPUs era that defined AI from 2020 to 2025 has hit its ceiling. And we've been talking about that here for about two years on this channel. We're entering what we call a new age of research. And it's where you're building products, investing in AI, or just trying to understand what this industry is headed to. So you need to understand what happens. And we can talk about what we're doing with this here at Startup Pack because we are building AI into every one of our projects. But you've got to know what it means to build AI. This doesn't just mean throw an open AI wrapper around things. You've got to really understand what's going on. Let's dive into some of these articles here really quick. All right. OpenAI co-founder says scaling compute is not enough to, to advance AI. It's back to the age of research again, he says. So AI companies have focused on scaling compute with lots of chips or requiring lots of training data. OpenAI co-founder said there are now needs to be a productive way to use all that compute. So it's back to the age of research again, just with big computers. So OpenAI uh, co-founder Ilya said, believes the tides of the AI industry have shifted back to the research phase. On an episode of the Dwarkish podcast published Tuesday, he said, uh, challenge the conversational, conventional wisdom that scaling could be the key roadmap to AI's progress. Tech companies have poured hundreds of billions of dollars into acquiring GPUs, building data centers, and essentially making their AI tools. So the wisdom goes that there's more compute or you have more training data that you have, the smarter your AI tool will be. But he said that for around the past half a decade, this recipe produced impactful results, and it's also efficient for companies because the method provides a simple and very low-risk way. However who's actually running his own firm now, believes that the method is running out of runway. Data is finite and organizations already have access to a massive amount of computing, he said. If the belief really is, oh, it's so big, but if you had 100x more, everything would be so different. It would just be different for sure. But the belief is that you have 100x for scale, everything would be transformed. I don't think that's a rule. So what we've seen with the latest ones is it's taking about 100x compute to actually get to maybe th two to three percentage points better. So that tops out as you look at the scale for progress here. Now, I want to talk about this here, and he, he shows the video here, and I'm going to go on the video, but because he talks about it, he says, this was the most important bit of the Ilya interview. Humans are not AGI, and LMs won't become like humans with more scaling. Humans lack a huge amount of knowledge and have insanely good con uh, con continual learning powered by extremely good reward functions, except for addiction, that guide them. And it's more about the learning rather than the knowledge. The term AGI was coined as a response to the narrow AI, which was only capable of intelligence in specific domains like chess, game code, etc. But general intelligence is able to learn different topics because that's what learning is about. Pre-training was thought to be the solution to reach AGI because you pre you train on AI so many different topics, but they have overshot that target. So it's and I agree with him here. There's basically a finite level of amount that you can learn on pre-training. There really is a finite amount of information. There's also a finite amount you can scale it. Let's talk about this one here. Wes Roth says that Ilya describes two eras in AI, the age of research from 2012 to 20 and the age of scaling from 2020 to 25. And he's now saying during the scaling era, the focus on predictable gains by increasing compute and data. Now, as models have hit practical and data limits, blind scaling seems less transformative. He believes we're re-entering a new age of research, this time powered by massive computers. The future will depend on fresh ideas and not just bigger models. Now, this is the guy that powered a lot of this. And he then helped into this, but he kind of started to step away the tail end of this because even he saw that we were running away from just bigger is better. Let's go here. Insights from Ilya's. Uh, scaling compute is not enough. Emotions act as compressed value signals. 
Um, pre-training drives memorization rather than structured world modeling. Now, we've been talking about this here on the channel for a long time. This is why we see a lot of these companies gaming benchmarks because they just keep training to beat the benchmark. And then if you have that same benchmark, you have to keep coming up with new benchmarks because the AI just keeps training to that benchmark. So it's not actually getting smarter. It's just training to the new. It's just... It's like not knowing about a human anatomy. It's about just learning the answers for the test. Now, humans still outperform LLMs in zero-shot generalization. So we adapt using real-time wor working memory from our environments. LLMs mostly sample from distributions. They do not yet simulate or construct internal m models of the world. Now, we've been talking about this for a long time here on this channel. And one of the things that I firmly believe in some of the stuff that you see me working on up over there, uh, over here, right, is we're building out mod we're using smaller models to do very specific tasks and we're working on these so that you can actually work with them to do your tasks very simply but we keep it very narrow and very niche that's how we actually get this to work really well so let's talk a little more about what he's talking about here is from 2020 to 2025 ai companies had a foolproof formula take more data throw in more compute bigger bigger uh, build bigger neural networks and watch performance go up predictably now, he calls this uh, the scaling recipe, and it was so reliable that companies could invest billions with minimal risk because the results were almost guaranteed. The problem is that this recipe had one critical ingredient, fresh data, and we've essentially scraped the whole internet clean. I was just working with a client whose data was getting scraped, and it kept bringing it down, and we kept finding a lot of the big names. It was actually a lot of the big names that you would recognize scraping their data. It's crazy. The, and this was, you know, this is a relatively small project, so it's interesting to see even the big guys out there scraping these. Now, pre-training data is finite, and we've hit the wall. There simply isn't a secret vault of untapped training data sitting around. Companies poured hundreds of billions of dollars in infrastructure built around a formula that's now showing diminishing returns. The guy who invented this approach is now telling everyone it's time for something completely different. So here's what's breaking everyone's brain right now. AI models can pass bar exams, ASP, ACE, PhD level tests, and outperform specialists on complex evaluations. But then you ask these same models to debug your code, and they'll fix one bug while introducing 10 others. Then flip back and forth between the same two bugs forever. Now, Suskavir, Ilya here taught, describes this as jaggedness, human performance on hard stuff, embarrassing failures on simple, easy stuff. Now, by the way, I'd love to hear from you guys and hear about your experiences. So make sure you leave me a comment to tell me what your experiences are because it's my favorite thing and I read all the comments. Now, the disconnect between benchmark scores and actual usefulness is the central mystery of modern AI. This isn't a bug that, mo that more training data will fix. It's a fundamental architectural problem that demands new thinking and new research on how we're going to solve this. So here's something even Ilya hinted at with, that most people have missed. Companies are essentially teaching to, to, uh, to the test without meaning to. When you're doing reinforced learning, someone has to decide what scenarios to train on. And naturally, teams pick scenarios similar to their evaluation benchmarks. The result is that models have essentially memorized the test rather than truly understanding the material. It's like that student who aced every practice exam through peer memorization but completely falls apart when facing anything slightly different. Or kind of like those guys you see that are super book smart in college and then go out in the real world and fall flat on their face. The companies with the highest benchmark scores might actually have the most overfitted, which means the least useful models. Now, a teenager learns to drive in about 10 hours of practice. An AI system needs millions of examples and massive compute just to approach a similar capability. So Ilya points out that humans lack enormous amounts of raw knowledge, yet we can pick up almost any skill throughout what he calls continual learning. Our brains run on roughly 15 watts, less than a light bulb, while training a frontier AI model consumes enough electricity to power small cities. Something fundamental about how we learn is dramatically more efficient than anything AI researchers have found out. This efficiency gap isn't going to close by making data setters bigger. It requires discovering entirely new learning mechanisms. Now, like here at Startup Hack, one of the things we're doing is we're taking that and we're niching down to very specific use cases. And I'm excited to get to announce here, so make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We're about to release our new product. Now, the companies that crack this problem won't need trillion dollar infrastructure budgets to compete. And that's one of the things you see behind me here, right? I keep pointing the wrong direction. You see behind me is I, you, I'm learning how to use very real hardware to build things that can do some really incredible things. 
Now, here's where it gets weird and fascinating. Ilya suggests that human emotions might actually be a form of pre-programmed value function that guide efficient learning. When you feel fear, excitement, or satisfaction, your brain is running a built-in evaluation system that helps you to learn from far less data. A person who lost emotional capacity due to brain injury becomes completely unable to make even basic decisions, suggesting emotions aren't just feelings, they're computational tools. Current AI has to be explicitly told what's good and bad through reinforced learning. Humans have millions of years of evolution baked into us. This might explain why AI systems can crush specific tasks but lack general common sense when even a ch that even a child can possess. The next breakthrough in AI might come from neuroscience and not from computer science. That's why I think it's really interesting what Elon's doing with Neuralink. Now, Ilya dropped this observation most casually. There are more companies than ideas, but quite a bit. So and that's during the scaling era, everyone did the exact same thing because the recipe was so reliable. Now there's a talent surplus chasing an idea shortage. The companies that raised billions on promises just scale bigger are now scrambling to pivot without admitting their thesis was wrong. Most AI innovation in the past five years was really just variations on the same scaling theme, but with better marketing. The age of research means the winners will be whoever discovers fundamentally new approaches, not whoever has the biggest GPU cluster, or those who can take the technology that's going to come out of this and build some really useful things. So a small team with the right insight could leapfrog companies spending 10 times more on raw compute. So we've run into the same thing. These machines that we have back here, right? We're learning to absolutely maximize the GPU rather than just go spend $5,000 a month on more GPUs. So the term AGI or artificial general intelligence was created as a response to narrow AI, like chess computers that could do one thing brilliantly, but then couldn't do anything else. Now, people assume general intelligence meant knowing everything and being able to do everything immediately out of the box. So Ilya argues that this actually overshoots what intelligence really is. Even humans aren't AGI by definition. A human doesn't know much of anything at birth, but has an incredible capacity to learn any domain through experience. His vision... Uh, um, of super intelligence isn't all-knowing oracle. It's more like a brilliant 15-year-old who's eager and capable of learning any job. So I have a grandbaby, and she just recently turned two, and recently she just learned what a frog says. So for the next two days, she was running around, ribboning like a frog, hopping and playing like a frog. She was enamored with a frog. Now, how did she, you know, she, I don't know how she learned what the frog was, but quickly you saw that frog continue to evolve, right? Because that ability, even at two years old, to be able to take a simple piece of knowledge and be able to move with it. And the frog got to have names and got to do things. And this is where you are going to see humans outpace AI every single time. So models of the future might ship incomp uh, incomplete and learn on the job just like humans, but we're a long ways from that. The most fundamental issue, according to Ilya here, is that AI models generalize dramatically worse than people. So give a human a few examples of concepts and we can learn and can apply it to completely novel situations. AI needs thousands of examples and still struggles with variations. I recently taught my 12-year-old how to drive out on my in-law's uh, farm and we were out driving and he was able to pick that up in minutes, right? It was less than an hour and the kid was driving around around the property. You don't see that, you know, it would take AI or a machine a long time to code up how to learn to drive. This is why you can show ChatGPT 100 examples of your coding style and it still won't consistently match your, pattern, your patterns. Now, my favorite thing is, again, make sure you drop a comment down below because it's one of the best compliments you can give me. But ultimately, no amount of scaling is going to fix this. This is not a data problem. It's an architectural problem. Whoever solves generalization will make everything we've built so far look like calculator apps. And it's funny, I get flamed in the comments all the time telling me just because I'm an AI realist that I don't understand and that these things are going to take over the world and I see this stuff all the time. This is the guy that built this stuff. And even he's saying it's going to take us a lot longer than we think. Now, RL, tra RL training... The technique that makes ChatGPT follow instructions and act helpful might actually be making models worse now at this point. Ilya suggested it makes models a little too single-minded and narrowly focused, a little bit too unaware. So unlike pre-training where you just use all the data, RL requires someone to carefully design training scenarios. 
This introduces human bias about what's important, which gets baked into the models as blind spots. So the, uh, the obsessive focus on being helpful in a specific way might reduce broader competence. It's like training a customer service rep so intensely on a script that they lose the ability to think on their feet. So models score higher and higher on benchmarks every month, yet their economic impact still hasn't really caught up. Now, Ilya called this one of the most confusing things about the current AI. How can something so capable on tests be so limited in practice? Businesses are discovering that impressive demos don't translate to impressive ROIs anywhere near as often as vendors are going to promise. Now, the gap between technically possible and reliably deployed into production is wider than most executives are realizing. The disconnect is why I keep telling companies to focus on specific, measurable problems rather than general AI initiatives. So you get the executives all the time saying, AI, 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 and I'm like, what are you solving? Why do you have to use AI? When benchmarks on businesses finally value, uh, finally value, finally align, we'll know genuine progress is happening. Now, Seuss Kiefer's new company, uh, Safe Super Intelligence, raised $3 billion and has explicitly said they won't release products until they solve the hard problems. They're betting that the path to real super intelligence requires fundamental research breakthroughs, not incremental scaling improvements. This is a massive departure from the ship fast, iterate quickly mentality that dominates Silicon Valley. He claims that they have enough compute to prove new ideas. The bottleneck isn't machines, it's insights and innovation. When one of the architects of modern AI says he needs to start over from fresh thinking, the industry should pay attention. The fact that he raised $3 billion on a no product until we figure it out pitch tells you how serious people are taking at this pivot. So from, 12, 2000, uh, from 2012 to 2020, AI was in the age of research where small teams with big ideas like Alex Nex and the Transformer changed everything. From 2020 to 2025, we entered the age of scaling where the winning strategy was simply more compute, more data, more money. But Ilya says we're now re going back to the age of research, this time with massive computational resources. So the breakthrough in this era won't come from whoever has the biggest cluster, but from whoever has the right insight about how learning actually works. Companies clinging to just scale it strategies are going to burn through cash while nimble research teams leapfrog them. So the next five years in AI won't look anything like the last five. And it's actually really exciting from where I'm sitting because as you see this stuff churning behind me, I can never get the right direction. You know, it's a really exciting time because anybody can build this stuff. We do drop a lot of free code samples here on the channel, so make sure you go and check those out. And I even have videos on how to build your own AI systems, so make sure you check that out. Here at Startup Hack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies, so make sure you check out startuphack.com and hear some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting-edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI-powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com Spencer.